So welcome everyone. Hello. If you are just joining in, uh, welcome. We're just going to get started in just a minute. My name is Gabby. I am from Buncee and I'm really excited to start off this webinar. Um, we're going to be talking all about literacy and supporting literacy with Buncee. I have with uh, me Shannon Miller today. I'll introduce her in just a moment. And um, what I would like to just go ahead and mention, I have shared the presentation here in the chat. So if you would uh, like to go ahead and take a look at that or just hang on to it for yourself or after, um, we have shared it here. We are also going to be following up with additional resources after this webinar. If you have questions as we're going along, definitely let us know in the chat or in the Q&A. Both of those buttons are located at the bottom of your Zoom window, uh, just in case you're brand new to Zoom. Um, and additionally, if you want to share where you're from, you know, who you are, where you're from, what you teach, things like that in the chat, please feel welcome to do so. Uh, don't feel pressured, but please feel welcome. Um, I will go ahead and share that link again, because I see some people in the chat um, are saying they can't see it. So I will go ahead and share it once again. Um, as everyone, if you're commenting in the chat, uh, there's a toggle uh, button, there's a drop down menu, you can choose to send to all panelists and attendees. Um, so let me just make sure that one is selected. So that way everyone can see what you're sharing. Um, I will be doing my best to answer questions as we go along. Uh, my colleague Ida is here as well to answer any questions um, as we're going along and I'll uh, do my best to save any ones that I think might be really relevant for everyone and uh, turn them over to Shannon at the end so she can answer some as well. So without any further ado, uh, I'd like to go ahead and introduce Shannon Miller today. Uh, Shannon Miller, she is the District Teacher Librarian and Innovation Director at Van Meter Community School. She has done great things in the tech space. I'm sure she really needs no introduction. I'm sure you all know, but um, she's an amazing librarian. She has done great things in the tech space. She's uh, an ISTE Making It Happen Award winner, which is amazing. Uh, she's been using Buncee for a while and she really likes it. And today she's going to tell us all about how you can support literacy with Buncee. So Shannon, I'm happy to turn it over to you and I'll be here to uh, answer any questions towards the end as well. Thanks, Gabby. And it's so good to be here with everybody. It's always exciting to see our participants come in and think about where everybody's at. So I can't wait to read the comments. I didn't want to go there just in case I messed something up, but I can't even wait to see who's all here and as Gabby said, if you have any questions as we go to, um, feel free, you know, to share them on Twitter because we'll be watching that as well. And so we're going to talk about supporting literacy with Buncee today. And my background as a teacher librarian and as an innovation director at my school, but also as the Future Ready Librarian spokesperson, I hear lots of stories and see lots of projects and things that we work on within our school, but also around the country and around the world. And so I'm excited to share some of those ideas and also the great ideas that Buncee has shared too. So when we think about literacy skills, I think it's really important to think about all the things that our kids need to obtain from the time they're little and as pre-readers and as they go through becoming readers and becoming skilled at reading and all the things that that encompasses. If it's from the awareness of sounds and print and the relationship between letters and sound and all the things that go with this, including spelling and writing and comprehension, and of course, a love of reading too. But as we think about literacy today and we use all of this great technology and we think very innovatively and we want to change the way that we have always done things and really make sure that we listen to the voice of our kids. I think that this little paragraph from the Alberta Education site really kind of says it all. And this is something that I've used before and I love it because even though we think of literacy and we know that it is reading and writing and we know too that this is essential for our kids. It also now is defined as the ability, confidence, and willingness to engage with language to acquire, construct, and communicate meaning in all aspects of daily life. Language is explained as a socially and culturally constructed system of communication. And one thing that I always think 
in the back of my head when I'm working with kids or when I'm collaborating or planning a project is how can we give them a platform and a voice to share the things that they are reading and writing and that they're learning and constructing that knowledge in creative and collaborative and really cool ways that they've never been able to before. And that's where Bubsy comes into play. And we also think about what we do as future ready educators and future ready librarians. Literacy is a big part of that. And I know as a librarian, when I look at our future ready librarian framework, literacy is in the center. And it's not only to inspire and support the reading lives of our students, but it's also to empower our learners as effective users and creators of information and ideas. And so again, going back to the slide before when we talked about what literacy is today and how it looks. Also, when we look at the children's rights to read from the International Literacy Association, I absolutely love these and I highly suggest that everybody prints them off. There is a link in this slide that goes to this poster and it's great because things like children have the right to share what they learn through reading by collaborating with others locally and globally. We're going to talk a lot about that today about how they can share and how they can collaborate and how they can also use things like reading as a springboard for other forms of communication, such as writing, speaking, and visually representing. We're also going to talk about that. And so keep these things kind of in the back of your head as we go too. So I've put things into five categories, five ways to support literacy with Buncee in the library, classrooms, and of course, during remote learning. And one thing that I want to point out is, as we go today in the start of each category, I'm going to share some things that Buncee has available for us. If it's templates that they have, which they have scads of amazing templates that are focused around literacy and reading and every subject that you can absolutely imagine. And also the ideas lab. I'm going to highlight some of these that I have pulled out and put in the front of each category because I want to make sure that you see some of these ideas, but also give you some inspiration to remember this is here so you can go back to it as you plan for the next school year as well. Within the ideas lab, you can filter by topic areas, which is really great to do and even bookmark things that you find. And so in this one, I checked the language learning. And as you can see, there are, again, just lots and lots of ways to be able to find ideas, but also to create them, to make a copy of them, to share them with your kids. And so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can find these great ideas from others too. Buncee also has under the Get Inspired um, tab at the top, the staff picks. And these are great projects that the staff of Buncee sees. And I love these because we get to really go in and see some of the things, the projects that they're seeing that are being highlighted too. So let's get started. Number one is use Buncee as a place to share what they are reading and learning. And in the beginning, remember, I'm going to share a few ideas from the Ideas Lab. And I love some of these because I think it really gets me thinking, too, on how I can use Buncee not only this summer, but into the fall as well. And we're all wondering and, you know, thinking in our heads. I know that I think about this every day, what learning will look like. And so a lot of these ideas, too, can be used either at school, in a blended learning situation, or even in remote learning as well. Ideas like keep a remote learning reading journal. Love this one. Share about your reading with an interactive book talk, Bunsy. And this is just so neat because Mrs. Q has made this with her cute little bit emoji and a video that you can add and it's really easy to be able to create that as well. A few of the templates that are really great to use when kids are sharing something like this as simple as a page to write their book review and it can kind of be like Mrs. Q where you add in things like your video or text or stickers and so it makes it really interactive. 
I love this little template, something so simple as sharing where you're reading at. Um, it might be at the beach, but it might be someplace else as well. And these are some of my favorite new ones, these little bento boxes that Buncee has put together. And we do a lot of book bentos at Van Meter. And there's a picture of some of ours that we have done just by having the kids bring their own things that describe the book. But now we can use these templates to have the kids put in what describes the book and then they can have their slide. You could even stitch those together to have a great big bento box. And so I love that. I also love to use some of the templates um, of like the bookshelves for displaying books. I'm working on a really cool project right now that hopefully I'll share either later today or tomorrow that has to do with um, destiny and kind of thinking about Destiny to Discover and how we're reimagining what our collections might look like in the fall with our situation with virtual and blended learning. And so bringing in some books that maybe tie into your destiny that they can open up some of the eBooks. When we also thought about remote learning and virtual learning in the spring, we did a lot of virtual field trips. And so I used Buncee in conjunction with Google Slides a lot for um, choice boards and things that our kids could go to. And so when our kids, for example, our first graders, they visited the zoo, the teacher made a choice board about owls after their visit where they could read and they could research like on Pebble Go, um, they could read some books on Capstone or even watch a video in Epic. And then they went and they created these amazing Muncies. These are our first graders and they were at home and the teacher said that almost every one of her students were completely engaged and that they created these amazing Buncees um, at home from what they learned. And I love them because I think their personality really shines through too on what they're creating. But as you can see, they loved researching and creating these great things about owls. And so afterwards, um, Kelly, she put them together even on a Buncee board so then the kids could visit each other's little bunsies that they made about owls. And so I love that tie-in with the virtual field trips. One of my favorite app smashes last year was the one that I did with one of my dear friends, Tracy, and she teaches second grade at Van Meter. And we did this with Buncee, Pebble Go, and Flipgrid. And at the beginning of the year, I worked with all of our second grade teachers and some of our other grades in having them create some Pebble Go Research Buncee journals. And this was going to be a place where the kids could go throughout the week and throughout the year as they were reading in Pebble Go and then create a Buncee if it was a page or a few pages about what they were learning. And so with this one, we used our little Pebble Go Research Buncee journals and they were doing research around penguins. And so as they went into Pebble Go and they researched penguins, they used then the templates that we had in Buncee to create a penguin journal. And so this was several pages where they would write down like the body and habitat and location and fun facts, anything really that they wanted to add that they were learning. When they were all finished, then we had them go into Buncee and use that information to create their Buncees about penguins. This is little birdie on hers and they did such an amazing job, you know, not only making just a really fun Buncee with the stickers and the backgrounds and the photos, but also with the information that they learned, they were absolutely amazing what the kids wrote down and it was like they just couldn't stop writing and that's how much they love using Buncee for projects like this. This is another one that is so great. This is Harrison's. And this is neat because this is um, a little boy named Lincoln. And I love this because he made a story up about his penguin in playing a video game with him probably. But I love it because he really personalized it also with a little picture and he got really creative too on what he added about. And so he made it a little personal story, which the kids can do. They love that part of it. 
At the end, we also had them share what they had learned. This was kind of the app smash that we did with Flipgrid, what they shared and what they researched and learned in Pebble Go and then putting it together in Buncee. And so it was really fun to be able to not only give them a chance to share what they had created, but also to give them a chance on what they learned. And it was really neat just to hear what they loved about that project too. Now, the cool thing about Flipgrid now is that you can, it's integrated with Buncee. And so you can go into when you make a topic in Flipgrid, one of the choices on resources that you can add is a Buncee. And so as you can see what I have circled here, when I made the topic and the kids would go there, they could also then click on that to see what the directions behind the research Buncee was. And then at the end of the project, I even added their Buncee. Every one of the students' penguin Bunseys, I stitched together into one big one. So it was there then for them to go and see it. And so they could give some feedback too within the Flipgrid on what they thought of everybody else's and what they were learning, which was so much fun. Now, this is something that we will continue to use and you can also go and you can find two things. You can find the um, Flipgrid that we used in Disco Library. I created this so you can go and you can just make a copy too. And it makes it really easy to be able to use this as feedback or a place for them to share as they're creating in Buncee. And you can also find that in the Ideas Lab. And so you can make a copy of the Buncee um, that has the Pebble Go Research Journal. And it doesn't have to just be about Pebble Go. It could be about even just research that they're doing maybe in books or eBooks or another platform. And so you can switch it up and use it however you want to with your kids too. Okay, number two, use Buncee as a place to write, illustrate, and publish their own stories. I think this is one of my favorite things behind Buncee, what my kids love, and I just love seeing the little light bulb go off and seeing how excited they are. And one thing I thought this was a good place to put this, one thing that Buncee is doing this summer is called the Buncee Summer Challenge. And I absolutely love this because it is focused around these big six topics um, throughout the summer. It started on June 1st and it goes through the whole summer. And it's neat because the kids then can go and they can see topics each day and they have Buncees um, within the slides. You can find the links later and go and kind of see what the weeks are, but you can share these with your students. And so I share them like on our school Facebook page. I might put it on Instagram. And then I know that our kids too are following along with what that prompt might be for the day. And so they have a little daily challenge that the kids then can create and then they can even add them to the Spuncy board. And so it makes it really fun to be able to kind of challenge them to think and read and really kind of focus on literacy throughout the summer too, while having a whole bunch of fun sharing. Now, a few ideas that I found in the Ideas Lab that I wanted to point out places that they can kind of read what they are um, learning and what they're writing and publishing, you know, and thinking about being just authors and illustrators themselves. This is a fun one. Um, create a fictional character postcard based on your summer reading. I think kids would really, really like to do that. This is another great one to create a story and turn it into a book using Buncee. And I love this because just having it be kind of um, just a really neat, this is one that is a great big collaborative one where they can use creativity and imagination and look at it too in um, an adventure. Maybe they're adding on as a class to the story. Um, maybe it's even something where each student has their own page. You could even do this with kids that are around the world. And I love this because this is definitely a good example of that because it is a global Buncee book. And so that is what my friend Michael has done is brought together a whole bunch of voices in this, but you can also use it as an example um, as well. And so it makes it a really a fun way to see how we could do that. 
This is a cool one. Um, create a little mini book. And so you could use this template and then they could fill in these little sections here, uh, print it off and even fold it up to create their own little mini book. And this is one that I thought was so cute. I love the illustrations on this that they can create their own snow day story. And I wanted to put this in there, even though it's not winter. Um, here, I'm in Iowa, here in the United States. But we can also think about it, maybe we could think about a summer activity, or when we go into school in the fall, they could create their own fall story. And so putting together something like this, where they're describing how they're feeling, describing how maybe excited they are, maybe they like that season, even putting in pictures, um, things that experiences that they have. And so just using that template to really inspire them to think about things all throughout the year. This is one of my favorite um, Buncees, and I love using this because it really gets kids thinking, it's a great one to use at the beginning of the year, thinking about themselves and kind of writing down the things that maybe they love or important facts about them, um, places that they love to go and their favorite music, all kinds of things that get them thinking and talking just about themselves. And you can share these with their classmates then, but it is also a good springboard to be able to even write their own story about themselves too. And so some of the backgrounds that you can choose within Buncee really get them inspired and thinking and excited about sharing some of these facts as well. And so you'll find lots of different really cool templates to inspire that creativity and that writing that they might do too. One example is this, of this is when we first used Buncee with our TK and kindergartners last year, instead of having them write, we had our TK and kindergartners choose pictures that describe themselves. And this was the very first time that they used Buncee. And it was amazing to see what they did because even though they were using Buncee for the first time and they used this little template, they were figuring out how to add their name, how to look for photos of things they loved and stickers and how to make it interactive. And it was just so neat to be able to see what the TK and kindergartners did. And this was just the start of them falling in love with Buncee and using it for all kinds of things, including when they were writing and adding their voice maybe in a video or on top of a sticker. And so it was really cool to see. Also using Buncee, I think to retell things in pictures is one of the most powerful things, just like we saw with our kindergartners. But this is an example when my family and I went to India, our son Hagen, he was in middle school at the time, he created a Buncee with pictures that we took during our trip to describe the trip. And so it was um, mostly pictures, a few topics and words, but then he presented it and he used this as a way to present what he had learned and all the things that we did in India to his class. And so I really like how you can use Buncee in this way because they can tell their story through great pictures, through great photographs, through stickers, through um, text, the interactive stickers, the animations, and it really makes it, I think, a place that they can feel comfortable, that when they're presenting, they're proud of what they're presenting and it makes it personal to them. And Hagen even was able to put some of the pictures of himself in it, and so it made it really fun for him as well. Another cool project that I love, this is another one with my friend Tracy who teaches second grade, is we did this project with our second graders one year where our kids actually made their own stickers and backgrounds and then Buncee put them into their platform and so our kids could use them. And the cool thing is, was not just seeing what they wrote and how they use their stickers and how they use their background and the artwork when they were writing stories, but the really cool thing is now you can find artwork that's done not only by our kids, but kids that are around the world. And you can look up in backgrounds, you can look up student art, and you can look up then in stickers, student art as well. And then your kids, and even you, I love using these and the things that I make, can use them then to tell a story. 
I love these for prompts because when my kids go in and they see them, they always find something really fun to write about. Um, another cool project that we did, and I think this is neat, like focusing around big topics throughout the year. And so we do a lot with Buncee around maybe special events or maybe it's a week that we might have a short week or maybe we have a holiday and we want to do something fun, but we want to keep them writing and thinking and reading. And so this is a great example of that with my friend Megan and her second graders. They did I am thankful Buncees. And so they not only added stickers, they added a little video about what they were thankful for. And then they even shared these with their families. And so it was just kind of a fun way to get them thinking about the holiday, but also getting them thinking about what they were thankful for too. Another holiday one that we did was making snow globes. And this was such a fun project. We did this with several of our grade levels. And the neat thing is, is that after we were finished with them, some of the classes even printed them off and cut them out and then used them as ornaments. They laminated the pages that they cut out and used them. And so with this one, we started it out with this book, The Snow Globe Family. And we gave them the prompt of if I lived in a snow globe. Now, this is really fun to do. When we showed this to the kids, they were just like in awe of how they were going to create their own snow globe. But it was actually, it's really easy. And we put these directions, we shared this Buncee with the kids, and we gave them directions exactly what to do by you know, taking a picture using remove um, background, removebg.com to take the background out of their picture and make it transparent to uploading it to putting it behind you know they had to put that behind then the snow globe that was transparent and then they were ready to create their snow globe story and so we gave them a lot of options and really left it open and the things that they created were absolutely amazing but especially the stories that they wrote these are second graders again but a lot of our grade levels did them and it was fun you know again to not only see them and to be able to share them but then to print them off for something that they could bring home was really special to our kids too. So this was probably one of the favorite projects that they did. Now, number three is to use Muncie as a place to share books, eBooks, and other resources from the library and classroom. And I love some of the ideas that are in the ideas lab because there's lots of different templates that allow you to not only share what you're reading, Maybe it's sharing, like creating a newsletter for your library, um, but also to share some of like the great resources that we have in our library, like really nailing down some of those things. Maybe it's a group of books that we have, like for a virtual field trip. Maybe it's a group of books for a special holiday or a special project or a subject that you're introducing to the kids. This is one that I did for a virtually um, book for a virtual field trip that we were doing. And I showed you earlier that we took a lot of virtual field trips during our remote learning time, but we do throughout the year too. We do a lot of Skypes and we connect with people all week long, all year long in just different unique ways. And so it's a great way to be able to bring together some of those resources so the kids then can find them. And so this was taking a virtual trip with Buncee and some ebooks in Capstone Interactive. And this is another one. And I love that these are in the Ideas Lab because you can make a copy of them and you can then add your own books. And we have the Capstone Interactive books, but they can be, you know, other books too that you might have in your library collection that you want to focus on, or maybe even it might be, you know, e-resources that you want to do as well. And so you can check out some of those too. When you're also thinking about sharing books, they've added a lot of different templates too. And so if you look up library or bookshelves, whatever the topic might be, you can find then some really great backgrounds that then you can fill in with your own things too. Now, during this section, I want to share um, the virtual camp adventure. This is something that I put together. We're on week seven right now. 
And this was kind of put together in the beginning to share with our students at VMeter, but I have made it so anyone can use it. Um, this is a website and you'll have the link. The link is actually, if you look up here in the right hand corner, you see that little link button. You just click on that and it will take you to this so you can share it with your school and your students and families as well. But one thing that I've done is each week we have a trace board. So this is from week one and we focused on imagination and where the pencil is circling, it went to a choice board of the books in Capstone Interactive that we were using. Capstone has made all 120 books throughout the 12 weeks open for everyone to use. Um, I have put the username and password and the website that you go to to get to those. And so these are open for absolutely everyone. And so all the kids have to do is click on this little link on each book and it takes them then into that book that they can read online. And so again, each week, if it's, you know, whatever week it might be, this is camping and picnic, always over in the corner is the one that you can find with the Pebble Go or the Capstone interactive books in the Buncey. And also I wanted to point out that in the other corner, there's always an activity that focuses around Buncey. And so this week we're on pets. And so the topic was to create your own interactive Buncey about your dream pet. And so the kids can go there and they can then get really great ideas and even prompts to be able to create as well. And so those are gonna go now, we're on week seven and so we go to week 12, but these will also be something that is available. And so if you haven't, maybe you've just been on summer break for a few weeks, you can use these then with your kids as we go. And these will be great to use even throughout the year as well. I wanted to just pause too and talk just about a Buncey board um, for a minute. So a Buncey board, if you have never heard of that before or used it, is a place where you can pin different Bunceys. And so like this is a Buncey board of all of those little virtual, um, kind of like the books that we have from Capstone Interactive that I do each week. And so on this, I have taken the link to every Buncey for the week and then I pin it onto the Spuncy board. And so this is like a one-stop shop for them to get to each week of the books that they can read in the virtual camp adventures. And so it makes it really easy and fun for them to be able to follow this. And so when I talk about Buncy boards, like we use it a lot with kids sharing um, reading and sharing Buncees that they've made, um, sharing things that they've written. And so it's a great place for the kids to not only view what they have done, but also to share with families, um, teachers, even globally with other students. And I'll give you some ideas for that too. I also love about Buncee Board, when you click up here on share, it makes it really easy to share with a, just a link. You can also share it with your students. You can choose the names that you want to share it with and it automatically gives you a QR code and so it makes it really easy to be able to share some of those. Now also another thing and I mentioned this earlier that Buncee is a great place like I showed you some of those bookshelves to bring together things that we might be sharing around specific topics. And this is an example of that. Um, you can create one. This one was for Hispanic Heritage Month and I brought together books. And so when they click on these, it will take them into the ebook that we have then in Destiny um, Collection, which is nice, and even into a collection of resources. And so you can go there and direct your kids just a little more specifically to things that they might be looking for. This is also an example of just adding Buncey. And I always think like in my head when I'm doing something like, how can I add these resources that they that they use and that they love? Instead of adding all kinds of new things, I wanna go back to the things that we've used that they are familiar with and that they love using. And so I'm always tying that in to everything that we do, making sure that we 
see these things pop up on a regular basis. And so when I put together our virtual maker space this week, and this is again something that everybody can use, all these resources on here are open and free for everyone. I also put under design um, Buncee, and that's a little pencil is circling and so prompting the kids to design a poster, a card, a story, or anything that they want in Buncee. But how can we tie it to, you know, think about how we can tie it not just to your, our collections, but what we're doing with our virtual maker spaces. And this is something that we're really gonna have to think about, um, especially as we go into next year and our maker spaces will look a little bit different. And again, tagging it in the collection that I made too for our virtual maker space that they can get to it there too. And so giving them options. Number four is use Muncie as a place for celebrating literacy with others around the world. And there's lots of different things that you can find in the Ideas Lab. Maybe something for World Read Aloud Day. If it is a poster or a social post or a bookmark, um, celebrating poem in your pocket. This is a background that popped up when I was looking for special events. And I know for us, we use Muncie for several years as we celebrated with others around um, the United States when we celebrated Palm in Your Pocket. And the cool thing about it too, about Buncee is you can add a video, you can add um, pictures to it, you can make it an invite that you can send out then to anyone. And so this was really fun to be able to make that. One of my favorite global projects that we did in Buncee and really one of my favorite ones that we have ever done is the book that we did around winter. And we had the idea to have kids around the world create what their winter looked like and then to create a giant digital winter story. And so we had over 250 schools participate. And it was really fun because from our kids making what their snowy winter looked like in Iowa, which was, of course, we get a lot of snow and the kids had so much fun sharing places or what it might look like, what they did, um, different things we could do in Iowa for the summer. But the really neat thing was seeing what other people were sharing too around the world. We had stories from Seattle, from Australia, from England, um, even from Dubai, which was amazing. And so the kids learned so much, but it was just so neat to be able to put that all together then in a giant collaborative book that we stitched the pages together from all over the world to make this to share. Another project that we did was our third graders have done Mystery State Buncees for the last couple years. And this was something that we do a lot of mystery Skypes. And so we love that back and forth when the kids get to like have a clue and guess where they are. So we thought, why not do it in a Buncee? And so we gave the kids kind of an outline of what we wanted them to include, um, especially that we didn't want them at the very end to give up their state because we wanted to make it something that everybody could guess. But the neat thing is, is that we put them all together on this Buncee board and we shared it um, just on like Twitter and my blog and we shared it on our school website and Facebook and we had so many people look at the kids buncees and try to guess where their buncee was that mystery state and so the kids love not only creating and giving clues to each other but also they love that global connection of sharing with others and getting people then to guess where their different states were and so that was a really really fun project. Now, the last one is to use Buncee as a place to celebrate literacy every day. And all the ideas that I've already shared are ways that we can celebrate literacy every day. But I wanted to pull in just a few more of thinking about, you know, not only this summer, but as we go into the fall and a new school year on all kinds of ways that we can use um, Buncee every single day. If it is making a book review and the book review could be written, it could be a video, it could be created with stickers, maybe a virtual um, bookmark. I love this idea. Um, I thought this was just so cute. And so using this template and they have lots of templates for different bookmarks, but then adding a video and you could even share it like posted on a Buncee board to share it with your classmates. 
And this is so fun um, to create a newspaper article based on your summer reading. So something to think about when kids go back. And, you know, even though a lot of these ideas, most of them are for elementary, think about too how you can put a spin on it and use it for your older kids. Our older kids love using Buncee. And so when they're thinking about, you know, maybe giving a book talk or sharing in a newspaper way about what they've read about summer, like thinking creatively about how they can do that too. Um, and leaving it kind of like a choice for them is so much fun as well. Now, one of our first things we have coming up as we go back to school on September 15th ish is dot day. And I love using Buncee for dot day. And so this is one of the things that are in the ideas lab to make your own drag and um, drop dot. And then I have a Buncee put together of ways that we can celebrate making our mark on the world for dot day. And I'm doing some little tweaks to it. So I'm going to share it in the next few days with some other ideas too on how we can really smash together like Buncee and Flipgrid and Wakelet and some of those things that we're going to be using um, for dot day. And so I'm excited to share that. So keep your eyes out for that too. But I think it's important to think about, you know, as our kids come back and even in the summer pushing things out to them on places that they can share. If it's a you know page a background where maybe they just write about what they're reading or maybe they're writing their own story and celebrating you know that um, way that they can really personalize their experience with reading and writing and this is really neat there are some backgrounds that Buncee has put together to just talk about you know remote learning and I think when kids can see themselves in some of these images and stickers that Buncee has created is really powerful but it's a great way for them to to be able to celebrate literacy at home and what it looks like with their family as well. A few things that we did that were really fun um, thinking about you know not only Buncee but tying it in and thinking a little differently on even though we're celebrating literacy and we're celebrating reading and writing, um, we tied in, you know, the things that we were doing maybe with STEAM. This is a great example. The kids had to build their own gingerbread house and we wanted them to create a gingerbread house, but it was getting close to pretty close to winter and you know, we thought about getting all the graham crackers and candy and frosting and we thought, why not make it digital and also really cool because we collaborated actually with Buncee and we told the kids made a huge list of all the things that they might need in building their house to put them together. But I think the other cool thing is not only celebrating the stories that they wrote, but celebrating the skills that they had using technology to build their gingerbread houses and just that creativity that they had. And the kids love this project because it gave them a place to build their house, but also to write and to share amazing stories that they put together around them too. Another one that we did, um, and this is another one that tied into actually Valentine's Day and the kids were creating um, Buncees for their book love for Van Meter Reads. And this was a campaign, is a campaign that we have at Van Meter just around reading. And the kids made these great Buncees by using this template that says a book I love is. And so they added a video, they had the book with them. The neat thing was we also did this during the book fair and so it gave the kids a little um, chance to also look at some of the new books that they might want to share and be able to read to. But this was open for them to share whatever they wanted to celebrate, you know, just their life as a reader and as a learner. And I love this because like a lot of them too, when you are watching what kids are creating, they always like to put in, you know, just a little random fact here or there, a random picture. But I think that's one of the cool things too about Buncee is it opens up those opportunities for our kids as well. This is a really neat one because this little boy had his dad visiting and so his dad and him wrote it together. And we see a lot of this too happening when kids do it at home. And Buncee is one thing that they love doing at home. And so 
you know, being able to celebrate literacy with our family at home, but having the kids, you know, know that they can log into Buncee to be able to create anytime they want is something that I think is just so fun too. And one last project I wanted to share is when we talk about celebrating literacy, we're always thinking about reading and learning and being creative, like no matter what we're doing. So even on a super busy day, like we had Thanksgiving and they did their Thanksgiving or we had um, the gingerbread houses. We, I think it's fun to use Buncy for these type of things because when they are so busy concentrating on maybe something like Halloween, for example, it gives them a place that they can be creative and really shine. And so on Halloween, Mrs. Warwick, she's one of our second grade teachers, Megan, and she's the one who also did the Thanksgiving Buncees. She had the kids then make a Buncee about their favorite Halloween book that they read that week. And so it was a time that the kids could maybe focus on something where they could still be creative, still celebrate literacy, but also have a place that they could highlight some of those things that they were doing for Halloween around the week. And so think about that, how we can, you know, tie those in as we go throughout the year as well. So there you have it. There's tons of ways and you've seen lots of wonderful ideas on how to support literacy with Buncee. And I think really the sky is the limit with Buncee and that's one of the things that I appreciate and love so much. Um, all of the projects that I shared, if it was something from school, I have um, blogged about, I've included the link in the slides so you can go back to them, but I'm always happy to answer any questions and help you with anything too. I think one of the great things, you know, that I've said this over and over throughout this is the ideas lab that Buncee has. Um, you can find so many great ideas for supporting literacy and all the other things that we do within um, our classrooms, if it's, you know, our little ones all the way up to our older kids. And so look for some of those ideas. Um, know that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can look for some of those and use them. And please, again, reach out if you have any questions, because I'm always happy to help. And so is Buncee. They do such a great job of, of supporting all of us. So I'm really happy that I was able to share some of those ideas with you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Shannon. Um, this has been really amazing. Um, I, I did have um, at least one question that I wanted to, to turn over to you to answer. Um, so Tracy asked, um, she said she, she loves the choices for the capstone books. Um, could you show us how to create these so we can personalize them for our schools? So oh, I wonder if you can go into a little bit more detail on that. Sure. Should I, why don't I, should I just go into Buncee? Yeah, sure, whatever is easy. Totally good. Okay. All right. So let's just go over here to let me go to Bugsy. So it's really easy to create these. And um, well, one cool thing is if you go to Ideas Lab, for example, you can find, let's see, I think it's under, and there are links in the slides. I think it's under you've been booked. Okay, let's see, book. Okay, here's one right here. So this one right here is an example of one I've done. And so if it was me and I wanted to make them, I would, go here to this template to, and you could just view it. And then if you go, like it's mine, so it's not gonna show that I can make a copy. Um, but I would, if I were you, I would make a copy of this so then I could just make changes to it. And so I'm just gonna go into edit because if you made a copy, then you can edit it. And I'll just duplicate the slide so then we don't mess it up. So if I was over here in this and I want to make changes, all I have to do, I'm going to just take off some of these books, is 
I do this every week. I just take off the books that I am not going to use. So I have like a blank template of what I want to add. And so when I go over here to the little plus sign, I would upload then, and I've already done this, like the copy, like I take little screenshots of the book covers. And so I know I have some book covers in here. So let's just find, we'll find a couple. And it's fun in Buncee because you can add like as many images as you want at a time. So it makes it really easy and quick to be able to do that. And so you would go and you would add these then to those little squares. So I just add them to here. And then what you have to do on each one is you have to add the link that takes you to that book. And so I don't know if you have Capstone Interactive or if you're going to use some from like Epic or maybe you're going to use some in Destiny, whatever it might be. But what I do then is I go to my books that I have in Capstone and I just log in and then I'm going to search for that Yasmin book that I had. Let's see, which one was it? It was Yasmin the Zookeeper. So I'm going to find Yasmin the Zookeeper and this little secret, a library secret, and this works for things that you might have in Destiny. It works for things you might have in Mac and Via. Um, it works for Abdo books, for Capstone, any kind of ebook that you have. When you click on play, this URL at the top is unique. It has numbers. It connects to this book. So what I do is I copy that. So I just copy that and I go back to my Buncee. And when I click on that book cover, down at the bottom, it gives me a place that I can add a link. And so then I can have that be interactive when my kids, here I'm gonna go to preview. And I always make sure I preview it to make sure they work. But when I go to that page, you can see that there is a link there. And when they click on that link then, it takes it right into that book. Sometimes they have to log in like for one time, like these books are all in Capstone Interactive. And so the first time they click on one, they might have to log in, but then it will take them to like all the other books that you have. So see how it just takes me to that one too. Now on here as well, like when you were, um, if you want to, and I'm sure that you know this, but if you wanna change like even what it says, then you would just click on this and you can change, you know, even the font um, or, you know, the text and whatever um, for you. And so you can, you can, you can also change that too. So I hope that helps. That's something that I've had lots of questions over. Um, and I did a little video actually in one of my blog posts about it. So I can share more if you need more or help you too, if you need more um, information. Awesome, all right. Um, thank you, Shannon, so much. Again, this has been really awesome. Um, I do see some questions uh, in the chat and in the Q&A that I did want to just go ahead and address. Um, so, I, and, and some of them are a little bit of repeat, so I'll try to just, um, answer kind of the best ones if there was anything similar. Um, so uh, I had someone say, actually, um, I do see a couple new ones, so I, I will definitely try to get to those. Um, so uh, uh, Mark had asked, can we share a Buncee slide as a PDF so the links or videos are still live? Um, so yes, you, um, you can download Buncee as a PDF um, or as individual image files. If you wanna download as a PDF, um, the links will still be live. Videos, um, we'll just see the thumbnail, um, but links you'll be able to click, they will be live. Um, so if you wanted to link to a YouTube video or something, that's something that could work. Um, so I just wanted to clear that up. Um, 
Uh, Myra had asked if you had a trial account, can you see all these resources? And um, Maria had asked something similar and she had said, are all the present uh, ideas presented created with the free version or do you need to upgrade? So right now we do have an extended free trial. So um, you can sign up to uh, try out Buncee for free, no risk. We don't ask for any of your uh, credit card info or anything like that. Um, so you can try it out. Um, you can take a look at our uh, pricing page for more detailed information and you can then select the account type that is best for you. You can try that out. Uh, and then at the end of that trial period, you're automatically downgraded to um, kind of a free version. And um, it is a little limited. So you can take a look at maybe wanting to upgrade at the end of that if you choose. We don't get rid of any of your buncees that you make or anything like that. So don't worry. Um, Definitely, if you're at all interested, it's absolutely worth trying out because um, you can try for free right now uh, and just really kind of take your time and see what works best for you and what account type is best for you. Um, I saw another question. Um, Myra had also asked, uh, will Buncee create QR codes within the Buncee platform? So yes, you can generate your uh, QR code for your Buncee right from Buncee. Uh, you literally just go to the plus sign and there's a button that says QR code. You click that and you add that to your Buncee. You can then print your Buncee out. You can scan that QR code and be taken to the live version of your Buncee. So super easy to do. Um, so uh, another question I saw, um, P. Santo said, uh, do students need an account to access this? So um, one thing I, I did want to mention is and you don't necessarily need a Buncee account to view a Buncee. This is why it's great for sending newsletters to parents. Um, you can create your newsletter on Buncee and share it to parents who might not necessarily have a Buncee account. They can still, you know, view any videos or hear any audio or interact with anything that you need. Um, but if you want your students to be able to create their own Buncee, or if you want them to be able to maybe copy a Buncee that you have, created, uh, maybe a template that you're sharing with them and you want them to be able to edit that, add their own things, drag and drop things, then they do need Buncee accounts. Essentially, um, how it typically works is you are the teacher and you have a certain amount of students underneath you uh, under your account. So students aren't, um, you know, they're not paying for the account or anything like that. You as the teacher are creating an account and you have students underneath you. So hopefully that answered that question. Um, so another question, I think, let me just double check, make sure I got all the ones that I can see. Um, Janet had asked, uh, will there be any how-to webinars to learn how to create all of these? So um, I have, uh, I'll, I'll try to share it again in the chat, but we do have a, uh, we do have other webinars available. We have a Bunsy 101 that's currently available Monday and Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern time and Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. So if you are brand new to Buncee and you want to learn all about um, just the Buncee basics, you want to learn what Buncee is, what you can do with it, and learn about creating a Buncee in more detail, those are great ones to join in. We also have webinars from other members of our community like Shannon. Um, we have uh, training videos available, so I'll definitely be sure to share that link in the chat uh, in just a moment. Um, so I see a couple <coughs> other questions coming in. Um, uh, as a uh, Sherry has says, as a librarian, is there a limit to the number of students you can have under your account? Um, so I would definitely take a look at that pricing page and see what account is best for you. But that's something that um, if you have lots and lots of students, you know, because you're the librarian, maybe you have every student in your school, you might want to look into Buncee for schools and districts. It doesn't necessarily mean everyone in your school or district has to have Buncee, but for um, for you, someone that is looking at a larger number of students, that might be a good option for you because then you can have an unlimited amount of students and everyone can have access to Buncee. Um, so I think that um, I think that is all the questions that I see um, that have not been answered. Um, so I think I think we're okay. Um, if we have just a quick moment, I wanted to talk really briefly about Ideas Lab. If you wouldn't mind if I shared my screen, Shannon, is that okay? Yeah, that's great. Okay, so I am going to just go ahead and pull up Ideas Lab. Um, so I know you had touched on it and uh, explored it a little bit, but I just wanted to make sure everyone knew exactly um, how to access that. So uh, I'm just gonna share my screen. I'll show you my, um, my dashboard. 
So of course, when you log into Buncee, you're taken to your Buncee dashboard. This is where all of your Buncees live. And to get started with Ideas Lab, it's this blue button here at the top. You're just going to click that and this will bring you to Ideas Lab. Um, and I know Shannon had talked a little bit about this, but, uh, and just how to filter for the different things. You can find lots of different um, ideas and examples and things and ways to get started. We do have an entire library category. Um, so it's a great way to explore literacy and uh, library, different kinds of ideas for that. Um, some of you are asking about um, the, you know, the virtual field trips and the uh, Capstone Interactive. These are the ideas here. You can see them in action. And um, if you want, you can copy and edit them to make them your own, like Shannon demonstrated. Um, we also have, if you check out the English section, there's a lot of reading ones there as well. We have an entire section that is just bookmarks. Um, if you check out templates, we have a lot of these. There's a lot of bookmarks that you can just use and share. So I highly recommend checking those out um, and really exploring Ideas Lab. Um, so at this point, if uh, anyone has any other questions, um, we did have, uh, we do have someone just joining in and um, uh, yes, this webinar has been recorded, so we'll be able to share that out with you and share some additional resources with everyone. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and stop my screen share. So um, thank you everyone so much for joining in. Uh, we, I had a blast. Shannon, thank you so much. This was, this was amazing. Um, I really, I think you covered so much and I think this was really informative for everyone. So thank you so much. Um, and for everyone who joined in, thank you all so much for joining in. And um, I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. All right.